Well, you, you know, you can't change your entire game to to play one opponent. We got some places that we're behind on, that we're under. Um, so that would be priority one. And then there's going to be a style of play that you have to deal with, with incredible speed and, and skill back end. I, I don't know how many categories they lead in. Let's just assume there's enough to say they lead in all of them. So um, you have to be right in all parts of your game. You can't have a weakness. Their power play's on fire. We gave up three the last night. So that would be a, a point of emphasis for us for sure, the discipline part of it. Well, I was fine with our discipline last game. We can't be in the box tonight, and then we have to match their speed. We'll play different styles of game, uh, and then each will try to impose their will. Is the speed game a good opportunity for Matthew to kind of try and pick that thing up? Yeah, the, the, there will be a different style of rush defense for sure in terms of how they approach it closer to the Dallas Stars style of game than, than we've seen in our last four here. Um, and then, but. It doesn't have to be necessarily the physical battle in Mackey's case, but we've got to come up with those pucks because their transition game is that quick. Is this a matchup uh, thing for, for Mackey or, or is Jonah hurting a little bit? I know he's out there. Might have, might have a sore paw, but other than that, he's fine. Yeah, he, he's fine. He, I, I want him in the lineup at his best. I, like, aside from the two incredible heavyweight tilts that, uh, that he put in, his game is good. And his positioning is always right. And he was hard and physical. And in terms of the prototype of how we play, I think that line gave us more consistent shifts in how our game should look than possibly any other line. I just need him right and healthy. And I've got a young guy that's, that's been good on that fourth line as well. And he's ready to play. I want to protect Yon a little bit, make sure he's out 100% when he's in. I mean, we've talked about these uh, two game sets creating some kind of playoff like atmosphere, but like, how big of a litmus test is it for this team to play against the best team in the NHL in this environment when maybe they're, they're ha coming off of two of their bigger stakers? Well, you don't, you don't come to the rink thinking this is just another game because their, their numbers suggest that you're going to have to be at your best to give yourself a chance to beat them. So, and I think we need that. I, th I think there, there's been a bit of a lull. Um, coming into the Jersey series. We were worried about that off the trip coming into this week. But the back half of our November is nine of 10 playoff teams and the elite parts of that, right? So we get Jersey twice, we get Winnipeg twice, we get Carolina twice, we get Colorado, Washington, Toronto. Um, <laughs> the only team that's on the playoffs we haven't beaten their building in the two years I've been here. So it's a 10 game run here. We do need to get it back on track, and we need to get going. You're not going to win all those games, and that wouldn't necessarily be your standard. Uh, but we have to look a certain way for us to have nice meetings. Speaking of teams that you haven't beat yet in your two years here, you haven't gotten one over. No, a no, and we've been awful. Like, we have not played well. So we're looking to change that. I mean, how how uh, good would it feel to get one over on No, I don't, I don't feel like that about Winnipeg. There are other teams I do. I, I don't feel like that. I'd, I'd like us to play well. I'd like us to play well for our team because we have pride in our game that we play. But it's a very, very good team over there, and they're really well built. Um, so we'll have to be at our best. There's, there's, for me, there's no animosity there. If they're not playing the Florida Panthers, I cheer for the Winnipeg Jets. Coach, you touched upon the special teams a little bit. Overall, that's been a really yeah. strong point for you guys. Was the other night just an off night, and what's overall been a really good body of well, uh, the, uh, the easy answer would be I would hope so. The other one would be, yeah, I mean, on net PK, we're t we were tied at one. I think we had tied with number one in the league. And then going into that game, we were only minus two. So we had scored four, given up six. So if you're going to have a game, if, you're, if you're, one of your special teams is going to slip, you want it to be dog awful in one game, and we were. But we got to get back on a horse, and these guys can move it around. And you always say you don't talk too much to goaltenders, but you worked with Hellebuck for, for quite a while. It's common for goaltenders to be hot, cold, go through streaks. He seems to be one of the guys that tends to uh, avoid that. How do you even explain his consistency throughout his career? It seems like you, you know what you're getting with him. I, I think he works really, really hard at it. There was a year, I think the year prior to him coming into dominance in this league, I think I pulled him five times. And which is actually not a huge number for, for a young goalie. And I think the other team scored five in each one of those games. That was kind of his cutoff. And I swear he thought he could have all five. 
I, he doesn't think he's that far off it. He has this incredible ability um, to work really hard at his game, to try to improve parts of his game. He's very dialed in on the sport, but he doesn't carry unnecessarily the ones that beat him, other than the fact that I could have stopped that. So it's the ones that, you know, it's the five passers in the front of that that nobody stops, that he almost gets, that he says, shit, I could have had that one. I, I love that belief in him that there isn't a puck that goes by that, that he can't stop. Uh, speaking of goaltenders, uh, who's going tonight? Sergei Bobrovsky. A lot of Saint Schmidt brought to your group here. A little bit of that personality. We, um, we knew when Brandon Montour went out, he was a bit of the chatterbox in the room. And... We were looking for a little bit of that back. So new guy comes in, takes him about a month to get everybody's nicknames right, and then it's on. So that's what he brings. I think he's, I think he's enjoying playing here. Um, his game for us has improved. N not that he had played, he had missed some time in Winnipeg. He, he wasn't in the lineup every single night. And then we played differently. So it took him a little while, I think, to get over that, that kind of the transition in style of play with the players that we have. We're just different teams. And then he's been really good for us. So he's kind of rounded into what we hoped he would be. Yeah. Sure well, it wasn't really mine. It was my wife's. That was the plan. So it was a small a community that she's from. And we, we went to a place just outside there. And it was kind of, from my side, it was family. And from her side, it was family, friends, and people that kind of have been supportive of her being married to an ass for 30 years. So she, 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 she's got lots, lots of support there. She needed it. We had had a family wedding in Detroit the day before, so it kind of worked really well with that. And then we had a, that was more of a public thing with, with people, and then we had a kind of a private thing at the night. It's nice. There isn't a hole. There isn't a hole in their game. Um, and I don't think they're lucky. Like I, I don't, I don't think. Um, I don't think there's any masking going on. Connor Hellebuck's been really good, but not to the point that he's the sole reason their power play's been really good. But it's not driving every game that they do. Where you can watch their games and say that's the place that we can get to them with. Right, their back end is up the ice, but they're also very, very strong defensively. They have a seemingly a complete understanding of their roles, what they do well, and they just do that. So I find them to be as complete, probably more complete and consistent in their game and also their lineup as I've ever seen them. And they, really what I think you see there is they've come of age. So they're drivers of their team. They're not 21 and 22 anymore. They've been through the curve. They've had their they've had their ups and downs in their own individual careers, and now there's a maturity about them um, as a veteran team. They're, 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 there's no holes there. Well, he's just evolved and changed over the course of the, his career. And, and I think, you know, in I think it was it 2018 that we went to the conference final, he and Jake Truba were the shutdown pair. They were young guys at that point in time. They, they weren't veteran players in the NHL. But what a great foundation then to launch your offensive game from. Highly, I, you know, I think to his credit, he would have come into the National Hockey League as an offensive player. He was, he was a point-producing player. And then he went through a change almost and accepted that and battled and blocked shots and, and did all the hard things and learned how to defend. And then he just added a bunch of things to his career. He didn't change completely. So he's still a really good defender. He's smart about it. Doesn't put himself in positions uh, that he doesn't need to, and then he's really dynamic with the puck. And, and his de his decision on when to shoot, when to jump into holes, when to make plays is really high end. I I, I don't I never when I watch Josh play, I never find him cheating for points. He plays the game, but his skill level allows him to generate an awful lot.